Good international break come at a, a good time in the sense of perhaps getting some guys back who were struggling beforehand. And getting people in. You know, the window came during that period and uh, we resolved the, uh, the Marvin Johnson situation and we brought a couple in, we got multi back. So, yeah, I think any of these situations you've got to accentuate the positive and uh, Hammy will be fit again and uh, Moulty's looking start, ready to start. You know, not start a game particularly, but, you know, he's ready to get started this season. So, um, yeah, positive. Yeah. How would you sum up your business? I'm sure you were disappointed to lose Marvin, but... A decent bit of money in and managing to replace him with a couple of guys. So overall, how do you, you feel the business goes? Yeah, good. I mean, I think that, um, you know, with the sort of you know, continuing sort of injury to Jacob Blythe, you know, that's been a shame and for him and for us. So, you know, I felt as if we did need, even remotely coming back, we did need another striker. So we've managed to bring in uh, the lad Bowman, who we've been interested in all summer. I spoke to him here with his, his partner here earlier in the summer, trying to get him here. Um, and eventually we've done that, you know, so he's different from the others um, and he offers us different options. So that's that's very positive. Marvin didn't want to be here. You know, we, we appreciate what Marvin did for us, but he didn't want to be here. And I certainly don't want players that don't want to be here. So um, overall, I'm content with the business here. Is Marvin leaving and the players you brought in, does that require you to change the style of play at all? A little bit, like yeah. Him. I mean, Marvin was a good player for us, you know, and gave us options, you know, in a wide area, particularly uh, or even through the middle with the type of player he was. But, you know, yeah, I think you have to accommodate the players that you have. Um, so it will require us to think differently than, uh, than you know, having you know simply Marvin's pace out in the left hand side. So, uh, yeah, we will we will we will, will um, endeavour to find the right combination of the players that we have in a system that gets the best out of all of them. You see, Marvin didn't want to be here. When did that become apparent to you? Obviously, the transfer request came in. But was it? Was that, was that a surprise to you? Listen, you know, first of all, you know, let's remember, I've been trying to sell Marvin since Christmas. You know, there's no ambiguity about that. We are a selling club, and Marvin was one of our main assets. Now, what we have to do is here at Motherwell is we have to balance the books. You know, we don't have a generous benefactor anymore. We have to do it ourselves. You know, Alan Burroughs is working overtime to make sure that's done. And one of the ways we do it is to, you know, um, subsidise the income that we have from the gates and from the supporters and their valuable money with, you know, the occasional transfer. So, you know, we were in a situation where really we had to sell a player and Marvin was that player. So, you know, it wasn't a case that Marvin forced his way out of here. What Marvin did was stamp his feet at the wrong time because, you know, we were on the case, we were going to sell Marvin and it happened in our terms. That was the important thing. He was never going to go anywhere unless it was in our terms and eventually went on terms that we were satisfied with. Is that obviously a vindication of the, the policy of maybe going down to the, the level of just below the league in England and managing to, to get players with potential in. Is that the way you see the movement for? It's part of it. You know, I think there's, it's in all areas. You know, we have experienced players here. We have players that we've brought up from down south and we have young players who are making their way into the team now, including the ones who are already in the team and including some who are on the fringes and that who we will work hard with to try and make players by the end of this season. Um, so it's a combination of all those things that we've got to draw um, draw from. You've got quite a lot of options up front now with Belich coming in as well as Ryan Bowman. Do you, do you have a plan in mind? Is it, are you going to be able to obviously... Get players off the bench as well and have options as well. Yeah, well, you know, you heard me last week. I mean, we went to Ibrox, and I'm convinced, you know, if Hamill, Mo, and Save and uh, uh, Ryan were here, then we'd get something out of that game. There's no doubt in my mind that we drew 0 0 with Dundee. Had we had those three players available and been able to make the changes we could have done, then we might have won that game instead of drawing it. So, you know, being able to look at the bench and bring on players when, for instance, at Ibrox, you're drawn one each, you're under a bit of pressure, they brought on three players and could change it. We didn't have three players to bring on because it was young lads that I didn't feel were ready for that sort of pressure situation at a place like Ibrox. So now we have these players, we do have options. They can't all play, but what they do is they give you a strength and depth and they give you strength on the bench, which is just as important. What are your thoughts about Ross County this weekend? Yeah, well, we went up there a couple of times last year. We went up there. I've always felt we were up there and we were a little bit weakened, but we were totally inert and we got get, we get a real doing, you know, 3 nothing going on, 5 or 6 nothing really. Um, I think it was 3 nothing. Um, uh, then we went up there again after the split and we rolled our sleeves up and we got dug in and we got a great result, you know, um, that took us to um, fifth place in the league, you know. So that was important. So that's the one we've got to think about. We've got to think about that. But we know that... Uh, they have a they have a, 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 a fairly standard way of playing that's not 
it's, a, it's not complicated, um, but they do it well. You know, they, they get the ball forward, they compete for the ball up front, and they get off the pieces. They're good at their set plays, they're aggressive in the right sense. Um, so, you know, physically we're going to have to match them, you know, but we feel now that we do have a squad that physically can match anybody. Is Callum McHugh, take it, was the break time enough for him to get back? No, he's still struggling, you know, this uh, post, you know, um, trauma kind of, uh, what do they call it? Um, concussion. concussion, delayed concussion, is, can be quite a nasty thing and it can be quite um, long and getting back from that, so no, he's he's not shown any signs yet that he's ready to come That's back. Starting to become a concern. Yeah, as you know, we can see for him, the lad. You know, he's at home, but it's one of these things. Apparently, he can wake up one day and feel better. You know, so we're hoping for that day soon. But at the moment, he's not ready. Yeah, Kieran Kennedy, is he fit again? Kieran's fit again, well again, but you know, he's lost about you know six stone. You know, he looks ridiculous. You know, in comparison to what he used to do. So he needs to. We need to get him training, we need to get him fed and uh, and look after him to make sure he gets back to his full strength before we consider him sticking him in. But he's on his way back.